We are in the thick of it when it comes to political campaigns. Many are fascinating. Tonight, we're going to take a look at one side of the high profile congressional race in Washington's District 3. Republican Joe Kent is running against Democrat Marie Glusenkamp Perez. Both candidates are looking to fill the seat Republican Jamie Herrera Butler has held since 2010. She lost in the August primary. The most recent polling in this race shows Kent with a slight lead, but in an area that's favored Republicans for a decade, it's shaping up to be a real tight race. Next week, we're talking with Glusenkamp Perez here on The Story. Tonight, we're going to focus on Joe Kent. He's been endorsed by President Trump and touts himself as an American first anti-establishment candidate. Investigative reporter Evan Watson joins us with more on what Kent believes in and how he's evolved as a candidate. Well, this week we went to one of Joe Kent's town halls in Clark County, and after he finished speaking, he agreed to sit down with us. But it wasn't that easy to talk with him. His campaign had previously denied our interview requests for a recorded interview. They said their policy is to only do live interviews with, quote, left wing media outlets. That's what they referred to us as. It speaks to part of Kent's campaign playbook, which has galvanized voters on the right edge of the party, but leaves more moderate voters with a choice come November. Washington's third district, covering Clark County in southwest Washington, has favored Republicans for the past decade. The district voted for President Trump in the last two elections by seven and four points. But in ousting incumbent Jamie Herrera Butler in the primary, voters now have a choice between a working class Democrat, Marie Glusenkamp Perez, and Joe Kent, a Trump endorsed military veteran who aligns himself with the more far right ideals of his party. We did much better than I think a lot of people thought we were going to do. And so we're starting to move the Republican caucus. They're at least having to acknowledge that a lot of people out here that, that they count on for votes, for you know financial support, that this is where the party's actually at. You know, it's, it's with the Trump America First agenda. Kent said he entered the race as retribution for Herrera Butler voting to impeach President Trump after the January 6th Capitol riots. He told KGW he believes January 6th feels like an intelligence operation and that defendants are being held as political prisoners. At a Clark County Republican Party town hall, Kent met with voters who praised his ties to President Trump, which includes skepticism of the 2020 election results. Kent said each state's certification and review of the vote hasn't been enough to convince him it was fair. He previously joined a lawsuit in Washington, claiming auditors in his district flipped votes. I think we always need audits. I mean, I won in August. I'm happy if I would be ecstatic if we'd go and audit that. So same thing, I, want, I still want an audit of 2020. However, Kent said he will accept the results of his upcoming election. Yeah, I accept, you know, had I lost in August, I'd, ac I'd accept the results, but I still want there to be actual audits and transparency along the way. So when I win in November, I'm confident I'm gonna win. I still want there to be an audit. At his core, Kent emphasizes an America first movement that criticizes current political leaders. He says the COVID-19 vaccine is experimental gene therapy, opposes any vaccination requirements, and wants to defund the FBI. I mean, I think our establishment, Republicans and Democrats, administrative state, um, that they have not been serving the American people, and I think we need to change that. He often blames immigration, both illegal and legal through H-1B work visas, saying it harms American workers. At the town hall, he told voters he would focus on obstructing and shutting down the federal government to prevent the passage of future democratic policies. So normally, you know, legislators come here and they say, oh, I'm gonna pass all these different bills and work across the aisle, all this type of stuff. We're not there right now. We're also gonna go after Joe Biden and impeach him and Kamala Harris, because look, yes. at the end of the day. Kent has gained notoriety on national programs such as Newsmax, Fox News, OAN, and Steve Bannon's War Room this year. Multiple times, he's had to disavow ties to white nationalists or extremists. In March, on a YouTube stream, he distanced himself from the comments of Nick Fuentes, a podcaster who the Anti-Defamation League describes as a white supremacist who has made racist and anti-Semitic comments. Kent had previously tweeted in support of Fuentes and talked to him on a campaign consulting call, but he said he didn't want his endorsement due to his focus on race and religion. In particular, his comments about like, hey, we're, we're fans of Putin and, and leading the Putin chant. And I think maybe he was just trying to be funny, tongue in cheek, you know, get some laughs, but then saying that, hey, this is uh, being compared to Hitler. That's not necessarily a bad thing, right? Like, okay, that's that's bad. Like we, we don't we don't say those types of things out loud because they're actually hurtful. We asked Kent, what would he say to voters who are concerned about his campaign's connection to people with these beliefs? It's nonsense. I have no connection to any of these people. Like if you're a white nationalist, or if you're a white supremacist, I have no time for you whatsoever. These people actively worked against me. Kent criticized articles connecting his campaign to other people with extremist views. 
whether they previously consulted with his campaign, took photos with him, or interviewed him. The reason why these guys are coming over and attempting to align themselves and, and force their horrible agenda on is because they see a gap within the Republican Party, I think. They, they see the fact that there's a revolution going on within the Republican Party right now, because there is. And you know, there's, there, my, my staff's not out there screening everybody's social media profile before they come in. You know, I think that that's the wrong way to do business. So yeah, I mean, there's people that have, that have called me, that have taken a picture with me, you know, that have bought a t-shirt and worn it, that have nothing to do with me. Kent says energy independence is the key to reversing inflation. So he calls for reversing green or clean energy plans in favor of American oil expansion. He says he wants to increase American manufacturing and stop sending money and support to Ukraine as part of a foreign policy plan that puts American citizens yeah, first. So how, how do we move the Republican caucus more towards the America first? So here's the good thing. Uh, step one was beating Jimmy in Republic, and we did that because yeah. of you guys. Evans with me now. I know this is a fascinating race, one that's being watched across the country. And I also noticed in that report, you didn't talk much about his personal background. Why leave that out? So his wife was tragically killed, a service member as well, in a bombing in Syria in 2019. And that is well known about his story and his background and also helped spark him to get into politics in this race. I did feel that uh, he didn't talk too much about that when we sat down for an interview. And that has been well talked about in the last year, year and a half or so, plus is readily available elsewhere online where you can find that information. So I wanted to kind of narrow down and talk about the issues at hand and some of the beliefs and the political ties that he has. Yeah, that makes sense. What was it like being in the room as he was doing his his rally. He has a, a lot of support there. People really are galvanized for him, are really coming around and supporting him in Clark County. But he did ask multiple times, which I thought was interesting, were any of you all Jamie Herrera Butler voters? As if to say, are any of you from that middle ground area here in the county, county that we're trying to attract votes from? No one answered affirmatively to that, but it speaks to this race where they're trying to find that middle, find that moderate, that political center, and attract those voters over. Yeah, it's going to be fascinating to watch. Thank you, Evan. Great stuff as always. Got it, Pat.